Dutch uh, is in the audience today. He has a donation that he'd like to make to the city. And uh, without further ado, I'd like to invite uh, Police Chief uh, Jason Olson up to talk about this important donation, and uh, and then uh, we'll take receipt of it. So, Jason. Thank you. So, President Janser and members of the council, I just we just want to take this occasion. Uh, to receive a donation, generous donation from Trinity Hospital to help us replace one of our canines. Uh, Trinity was generous enough with us a few years ago in the purchase of a, a canine that has now retired and the department now is in a position where we are in need of an additional canine. And we were contacted by uh, CEO John Kutch and uh, Trinity and they wanted to help us out again. And so they are here today to uh, present us with a check uh, towards that end. So we will, with the intent of purchasing a canine for the department uh, in September. So with that, I would invite up John Kutch and... Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Chief Olson. Uh, Minot City Council, Tom Berry, Chief Olson, uh, Trinity Health stands before all of you today with great pride to present you with this in-kind contribution of $7,000 for the acquisition and training of your very next officer to the police force here mm -hmm. at the Minot uh, Police Department. Um, I've been asked from time to time, why is Trinity Health so willing to invest in uh, a canine unit? And I remind uh, these individuals when they ask me that question, um, I share with them that we are not investing uh, in, a, in the canine unit uh, per se, but we are actually investing in the safety of our city. And I want to thank you on behalf of our board of directors and Trinity Health at large for all of the work that you do to protect uh, and serve all of us residents here in the city of Minot. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, we'll call to order the uh, June 27th uh, Committee of the Whole meeting. Um, as we begin, um, I'd ask you to please uh, silence your cell phones as we proceed. Um, we have uh, 32 items on our agenda today. It's rather lengthy because of the um, reorganization of the council yesterday, and so we have a, a, a quite lengthy agenda today, but we will try to work our way through it as uh, well as we can. Um, uh, I have been asked uh, uh, to pull uh, the following items. Uh, if you look at uh, the agenda numbers 8, 10, 16, 22, 25, 27, 29, and 30. Um, 31 is a report that uh, is on the, uh, available on the server that uh, all of the council members should be able to, to see. And um, I would ask if there's anybody in the audience that is here about uh, any of those items that I did not mention were pulled, if you would, if you would like your item pulled and it has not been, um, please let me know now so that we can do that. President Johnson, I would add item 20. 20, okay. Okay. Um, Council, is there a motion on the remaining items? Move approval on the remainder. Okay, there's consent motion for uh, all the items except 8, 10, 16, 20, 22, 25, 27, 29, and 30. Could I get a second? Second. Seconded by uh, Mayor Sentma. Uh, any discussion? President Janser. 
Uh, Alderman I, Wolski. I just want to share that I this is one of the agendas that I have not had as much time to review. So I, um, I think there's a possibility that on Monday night some of these things may get revisited again. I just wanted to share that. That's uh, that's certainly uh, something that can happen. Um, any other discussion? Mr. Janser, perhaps, uh, or President Janser, perhaps we should pull 32 for a little bit of discussion tonight as well. Okay, you want to pull 32, so be it. Um, and uh, so we'll do that. We have a consent motion on the remaining items. Call the roll. Olson? Yes. Pittner? Yes. Wolski? Yes. Sitma? Yes. Janser? Yes. Um, that brings us to item number eight. Uh, sidewalk assessment. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Wolski. Second. Second by Olson. Uh, discussion. I believe um, Mr. Crab Seth wanted to address the body on this. <coughs> uh, Mr. President, Council Members, Mayor, I'm, I'm addressing. I am representing as Watney Realtors. Uh, a client owned the property 822 10th Street Northeast. Um, he got the letter about the assessment. We closed on the property on November. It was owned by Dakota Bank. I did check with the assistant city engineer. The letter was sent out certified to the address of the house and then sent back, okay? Because there was no one, the house was vacant and never did get to Dakota Bank. And so we had it written in our contract that all special assessments on the property at the time would be paid, but because of a timing issue, the work was done in August, we closed in November, but you're not certifying the payment of the work until now. So it didn't exist when we closed and we'd like just to have it pulled aside until we can talk to Dakota Bank and see if we can work it out. I mean. We know the work was done. We understand why it got done. Uh, you know, I know Dakota Bank, if they would have received the letter, they probably would have done it on their own. But it was one of these things because it didn't get delivered because the house was vacant because it was under foreclosure. And we just like to work out something. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, is there somebody from the staff that can kind of uh, guide uh, where we should go on this? since it's, you know, happened already. Uh, President Janser and committee, um, this is unfortunately something that happens fairly regularly with our special assessment process. Um, with all of our assessment projects, we maintain um, a separate spreadsheet with what we internally refer to as pending assessments because they aren't actually an assessment until the project is completed and city council has approved that, that final special assessment district and that's when it truly turns into an assessment. So during that time frame of um, construction or in this case uh, the sidewalks um, we attempt in our office to keep track of all of these projects the uh, parcel number the address and the owner and the owner would be the owner of record at the time that they began the project um, because there are notifications that get sent out with sidewalk assessments and the property owners have the opportunity to uh, take care of the sidewalks themselves. And if they don't respond or if they so allow the city, then the city will go ahead and um, take that project on. So between that time frame and when we finally do assess the project, that property could have changed hands. And if we don't have notification of the change of address or the mailing address for the owner, then the owner of the property may not get the letter. And that has happened in the past. 
Um, I know we follow Century Code, um, and the Century Code does state that, um, you know, we are under no obligation to um, keep track of the pending assessments and to notify owners of that, but um, we try our best to keep everyone um, that calls and asks about any property. Um, if it is on our pending list, then we certainly let them know that there is a pending special that um, will be coming to this property. So in this case, um, the work would have been done in the fall of 17. So we weren't able to um, certify it to the county last year. So now this year we are going ahead and running it through council so that we can certify it this fall. So in the meantime, it's changed hands. So however, um, so I guess one question would be if, if the um, current owner of this property or whoever was representing them in the sale would have called and inquired uh, of the city if there was something pending on this, you would have been able to tell them that what was going on, correct? If, if anyone had called our office and asked about any active specials or pending specials on that parcel, um, especially at that time, it's possible that we may not have received notice from um, the other city department that the sidewalk work was completed there. Because if they were in the process of completing the work at that particular place, treasurer's office may not have received that information yet. It, it, it's kind of in that gray area where we would have been in the process of um, gathering that information for year end and making sure we get um, a complete list for everything that occurred with sidewalk through you know, construction season of 17. So it, we may have gotten that particular address. We may have not, it's, it's hard to say. We try our best, but you know, again, we're not under any obligation to um, keep a list of pending specials so that we can notify owners, but we, we try our best so that there aren't any surprises. Okay, so w would, you, would you say then that because the assessment is being finalized now, that it associates with that property and whoever the current owner is now? Or do we have some option to um, in some way put this in abeyance and, and um, hold it for a short time or do we have that option? All I can tell you is what I have read in the Century Code and it is a special assessment and special assessments follow the property, not the owner of the property. So whoever the owner of the property at the time that we would certify it to the county, whoever that property owner is, they're the ones that will get the bill and they're the ones that would be responsible. Okay, thank you. President Janser. Mayor Sitma. I think the issue on this one is more so time. Uh, I don't think there's a question on property owner, but it, do we have any leverage to even delay this a set period of time, whether it's the entire thing or just one of them, to take care of the issue? Right. We would, if, if we want to be able to um, certify these sidewalk assessments and um, send them to the county so we can collect on them, we would need to have the city council approve them by, um, I don't wanna say the October city council meeting because that's really pushing it, but um, that would be the very last time that you would be able to certify a special assessment so that we could get it to the county timely. Pretty much the same with our budget then. Okay, any further questions? I have a question for Blake. <clears throat> if. Blake, was this offer made on a traditional minor MLS offer to purchase? 
Yeah. Isn't isn't there a uh, a uh, segment in there that discusses special assessments that should uh, have handled this? We marked on our offer. Our offer was written on August 29th. We said that the owner would pay all specials. Okay. Okay. But like like you said, it was a timing issue when we ran a check on the specials. They hadn't been certified yet. We're, you're certifying them today. Uh, they were still working on the sidewalk when we did the work in August. When we wrote the offer on the 29th, the sidewalk wasn't completed. So the city completed the work sometime early September. We closed on the 15th of November. Okay. okay. And, I, you know, if you can hold it just this one for 30 days to certify the rest, I haven't had a chance to visit with Dakota Bank. They were the owners at the time, and we'd like to work out something because my owner of the property feels, even though he's got the enjoyment of the sidewalk in front of it being new, uh, he wasn't responsible for, and you know, and the bank didn't ignore the letter neither. They just didn't get it because of the way it's sent out. Understandable, just for the information of fellow alderman, um, there is a provision in our contracts in my MLS um, offer to purchase, and I'll just read it real quickly for you. In a pu if public improvements have been made that have not been certified for assessment against the property and special assessments will be the responsibility of the buyer. Um, I don't know if that has any bearing on how the council were to proceed, but if that were to be the case, it, it is written clearly into a contract that any special assessments, if not certified, should become the responsibility of the buyer. Okay, thank you for that. Um, any further discussion? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Chairman, City I just assessor. would like to indicate too for you that a couple of years ago, this came up in a larger scale where there was a subdivision that people were buying and selling lots and they were in between this gray area of being certified. And there were three departments that got together to try and address all this, what, we, what could we do? Uh, and basically we had determined at that time that there was a map we could provide and so this has been looked at internally as to try and figure out the best approach and it, it isn't an easy solution. I just want you to be aware that we've all got together and tried to look at this before. So. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? Alderman Wolski. Thanks, President Janser and, and Mr. Turnus. I appreciate that context because I think I remember that case from a couple of years ago and I do remember this being uh, again a, a recurring challenge um, I think based on uh, Alderman Pittner's comments um, uh, uh, I'm inclined to uh, approve this tonight but uh, that still leaves a little bit of time for Mr. Krapseth to uh, to talk to the bank in the next couple of days um, but uh, I think I'm going to support this today. But. Okay, Finance Director Lakefield. Uh, President Janser, members of the council, uh, we just keep in mind too that approving these special assessments or the certification of these assessments does not prohibit um, the new buyer and the former owner of negotiating some type of settlement uh, in regards to this. These assessments will come on the 2018 tax bill will be due in early February for the discount. So there it still gives them some time to negotiate some type of settlement to this as well. Okay, thank you for that. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I assume we're ready to vote. Call the roll, please. Wolski? Yes. Sitma? Yes. Janser? Yes. Olson? Yes. Pittner? Yes. Second. Okay, motion carried. Um, Item number 10 is the uh, Storm Sewer District number 122 final payment. Is there a motion? Move the item. Second. By Wolski, second by Olson. Discussion? I, uh, just a quick question for our, our city engineer. Um, we've had some, some rain in the last few days, some heavier storms. Um, how, how are we doing up there? Is this, uh, <laughs> or, or have we been observing in terms of the performance? City engineer. Mr. President, Alderman Wolski. Um, like any good city engineer, when it rains, I usually go for a little drive at night. I drove 18th Avenue here now twice, and uh, it is working. It's working just fine. And um, there are some limitations, of course, to the district because we reduced the scope. So you're going to have more ponding on the west side of uh, 6th Street on 18th Avenue because there's only a couple catch basins there to, to catch that water. And uh, I did notice that it was about four or five inches deep on the curbs. 
in that area. But uh, the low point uh, where we had the majority of the flooding, even during some of these heavier rains, um, while the water was probably three, four inches deep, it wasn't two feet deep like it used to be. So I would call this a successful project. Okay, thank you for that information. Any other questions for the city engineer? Thanks, Lance. You're welcome. Any further discussion? Seeing none, call the roll. Wolski? Yes. Sitma? Yes. Janser? Yes. Olson? Yes. Pittner? Yes. Motion carried. Uh, item 16 is the adoption of permit fees uh, by resolution. Um, is there a motion? Move approval. Moved by Olson. Second. Seconded by Sipma. Discussion. President Wolski. President Johnson, thanks. Uh, I took kind of a quick look at this, um, and uh, it seemed like this was primary, primarily related to uh, fees uh, surrounding building and construction. Um, are, are there other fees that should be wrapped into this uh, resolution, or uh, ha have we captured everything inside of this? City Manager. Thank you, President Janser. Um, we haven't not, we have not captured everything, uh, and that was intentional. Essentially, the the things that need to be captured are still being reviewed. Uh, I spoke with the fire chief, for example. There are a number of fees that we'd like to update uh, that we weren't ready to include with this um, with this documentation. So, we've decided in that particular case to hold until we're ready for that. And the same is true for some other fees, uh, particularly utility fees and that sort of thing. Uh, the ordinance that uh, is on second reading for this next council meeting essentially allows us to move fees into resolution form instead of keeping them in ordinance form. And the difference there is that you know, the ordinance is the law, the resolution essentially is what is, and we want the, the, to clean the law portion of the ordinances up and essentially use that as it should be used, which is to designate the authority of the city council to charge fees, but then keep the fee structures included in resolution, which are more easily updated uh, throughout the year or years or, or whatnot, it essentially uh, depending upon how often those get updated. Yeah, I think this is a good step to uh, increase the flexibility and efficiency, so. That's good. Yeah. Any further discussion? Call the roll, please. Olson? Yes. Pittner? Yes. Wolski? Yes. Sitma? Yes. Jansen? Yes. Uh, motion carried. Um, item 20 then is uh, the Washington Elementary School Safe Routes to School Project, uh, the Transportation Alternatives Grant. So moved. Moved by uh, Mayor Sitma. Second. Seconded by Alderman Olson. Discussion. Alderman Wolski. President Jansen, I think once again, uh, perhaps a, a question for our uh, city uh, engineer. Um, Mr. Meyer, uh, this came up uh, last winter maybe and uh, um, uh, appreciate this program in particular the way we're, we're addressing it here um, and uh, wanted to, to continue your or, or, um, commend you for pursuing it and and ask you to keep pursuing it. Uh, in particular, I don't know if there will be more dollars available here, but the, the Ann Street Bridge, again, continues to feel like a very good fit for this program. I just wanted to share that comment that I, I hope you'll continue searching for, for those resources related to that project. Mr. President Alderman Wolski, yes, we can do that. And um, I think like I mentioned last winter when this came up, you know, my recommendation at some point would be for council to prioritize funding for a study so that we can really identify the scope of what would need to be done on that bridge. That helps us to uh, have an educated conversation with the DOT when we sub, uh, submit for these grants. I heard through the grapevine that our application was scored number one in the state. That's why we received the max amount of funding. And we could support that application because of the Safe Route study that we did a number of years ago. So when the DOT um, sees that we're, we're following our plans that they helped fund, um, that scores us a lot of points. And so I would recommend that for the future. Okay. okay. Thank you. Any other questions for the city engineer? Thank you, Lance. You're welcome. Any further discussion of the item? Seeing none, let's call the roll. Sitma? Yes. Janser? Yes. Olson? Yes. Pittner? Yes. Wolski? Yes. Motion carried. 
Item 22 is the uh, right-of-way encroachment application of smoke-free environment signs. Move approval. Moved by Olson. Second. Seconded by Wolski. Discussion, please. Alderman Wolski. President Johnson, thanks. Uh, I, I was hoping before Monday night we could, uh, and, and if we have answers to one of these questions, great, but uh, maybe see a rendering of what we're talking about, and are we talking about uh, a uh, new placement of signs uh, or attaching to existing uh, light poles or something like that down there? Mr. President, Alderman Wolski, the, the signs would look like this, approximately this size. I think in the memo we had something it quite larger. 12 to yep, and I asked that they be reduced in size. So it'll be, uh, I think, uh, 8 by 12 or 9 by 12 signs, approximately this size. They'll look like this. Um, originally, the, the applicant wanted additional signs. However, you know, the more signs we put up, the more cluttered I think things can look. It can detract to what we're trying to do downtown. So um, we're going to try to put one up at, at or approximately close to the intersections on Main Street, Central, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. And um, if you approve it, they'd look similar to this. And then the DBPA would, would install those signs with our approval. And what, Lance, what's it going to be made out of? I mean, is it a, be a metal sign, a plastic sign? They, to withstand any kind of, you know, the elements over time, they'd have to be um, uh, steel, or excuse me, aluminum, which is what we make okay. the, the other signs out of. Okay. Uh, and this would attach to a, an existing signpost we have down there, or would we be planting a whole new uh, stake for these? We'd require them to be on existing poles. Existing poles. Yeah. And uh, obviously, my assumption would be that the, the Downtown Business Professional Association supports this. Yeah, the, the application came came from them. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any further questions for the city engineer? Seeing none, uh, thank you, Lance. You're welcome. Any further discussion of the item? If not, call the roll. Olson? Yes. Pittner? Yes. Wolski? Yes. Sitma? Yes. Janser? Yes. That brings us to item number 25, the uh, retail liquor license transfer uh, of Arnie's 2.0. So moved. Moved by Wolski. Second. Seconded by Mayor Sitma. Discussion. Alderman Wolski had a question on this? Yeah, President Johnson, more kind of an internal process question. Uh, um, do, do we have a, a fee for, for these transfers? Not sure. Uh, City Clerk. Yep, Alderman Wolski and committee, we do have a fee. It's $250 for a transfer. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions? President Jensen. Mayor Sentler. More so of just a comment, noticing that uh, on the transfer, a transfer fee on this one, compared to all of the other ones, this, the few that have taken place since we had the ad hoc committee a couple of years ago, noting that this one was $0 just for comment. So noted. Further discussion? Seeing none, we'll vote. Call the roll. Yes. Sitma? Yes. Janser? Yes. Olson? Yes. Pittner? Yes. Motion carried. Uh, on to item number 27, which is the Carnegie Center Structural Repairs Plan Approval. Uh, number 4291. So moved. Moved by Mayor Sipma. Second. Seconded by Alderman Olson. Uh, Alderman Wolski, your hand was up, I think. It, it was. President Janser, thanks. I'm trying to discover who this memo is. Oh, Mr. Jonathan. Um, Dan, as I scrolled through the, the, the bid estimate, the itemized list, uh, I got to the bottom of this, and, and then I started just kind of going, huh. Um, and so I see the, the subtotal, the, the, the estimates at about $249,000. Then we have a small project factor, which adds 25%. We have a, a general requirements uh, factor, which adds 20%. We have a contractor O&H profit that adds 20%. And then we have a contingency that adds 20%. Um, and as I look at that estimate, I, I just, uh, I, I guess I question it. I, without knowing a whole lot about the construction business. So I was hoping you could inform me. President Janser, Alderman Walski, um, this is a little different project, a little bit out of my wheelhouse. I'm 
not used to working with buildings. But basically what the architect has done is instead of including all those contingencies in the bid items that you see in there, they've used their means estimate for estimating what the cost is and then broken out, you know, overhead separately instead of incorporating, you know, 10 or 20 percent overhead into each individual item. Most uh, engineer side of things, you know, they'll, they'll uh, use an, an average bid price when they have uh, bid things, you know, for sewer or water, things like that um, that are commonly done. Uh, this is kind of a, a little different creature since it's not your everyday work, uh, since it involves a lot of, you know, a historical building, uh, a lot of different techniques, you know, such as when you look at removal of the brick on there for reuse, can't be done with power tools, has to be done with hand tools. So there's a lot of, uh, I guess, different uh, things that they take into account. So that's just their way of, of uh, trying to account for the different contingencies, overhead markups, things like that. Okay. That okay. answer your question? Okay. Um, any further questions for the Public Works Director? All right, seeing none, thank you, Dan. Further discussion of the item? Seeing none, we'll uh, hold a vote. Please call the roll. Sitma? Yes. Janser? Yes. Olson? Yes. Pittner? Yes. Wolski? Yes. All right, motion carried. Item 29 is the uh, direct purchase program. Um, and uh, I'm not sure if, uh, let's see, I think we have, um, okay. I'd make a motion to approve. Okay, move, motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Uh, seconded by Olson. All right. Um, yeah. President Mr. Johnson. Lakefield, uh, you were going to, I think, visit about this a little bit. President Janser, members of the council, if you remember back in our March meeting, we had brought this item forward um, with a proposal from Wells Fargo and uh, some documentation. Um, since that meeting, we've gone back and visited with a number of additional vendors. The state of North Dakota was uh, soliciting RFPs for a very similar project. Um, so we we're waiting uh, since that time to see if they were selecting a vendor and if we could partner with them um, to potentially get uh, a bundle of services and maybe a better rate through their project. Um, in discussions with the state of North Dakota, it appears that their project is going to be much different than we envisioned here for the city of Minot. They are looking at just um, a P card type of system and not doing the, uh, what they call the uh, direct purchase part of the program. We did have some discussions with uh, another vendor, U.S. Bank, um, as well as continuing discussions with Wells Fargo. Uh, we approached uh, one of our local partners here too to see if this is something that would be on their radar screen at, if not now, if at some time in the future. Um, and again, just to economies of scale, uh, they didn't rule that out at some point in the future, but it just isn't something that they have available at this point. Um, going back through the evaluation process with uh, U.S. Bank's um, product that they offer, it's a little bit different, a little bit different terms, um, you know, a number of comparable factors. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, Wells Fargo has seemed to have uh, benefits that we were looking for that weren't offered with other programs. And one of the big decision uh, factors for us is they offered um, the ability to terminate the, the agreement with 30 days notice. So if we got into this and it's something that didn't look like it was going to work out, that is something that we could terminate and uh, move on to another selection. The other vendors were looking uh, generally for five-year agreements uh, and stated the minimum would be a three-year agreement that they would look at. Uh, during this time that's elapsed, we also had contact with Cass County they had implemented the direct purchase program with Wells Fargo. They are also on the same version as SunGuard that we are currently on. And uh, SunGuard has developed the modifications to the software that are needed to implement this program. 
and we've kept in touch with Cass County to see how things are going. Uh, they said so far it has been successful. Things seem to be working as uh, promoted and uh, you know they have had it's been well accepted by their vendors and uh, they continue to add additional clients uh, on an ongoing basis. And if you remember from our discussions back in March, um, there's a significant revenue stream or revenue potential to the city of Minot uh, for this proposal. And that's why we're bringing it back here. Not only do we think we've gained some efficiencies in our department and how we handle bills and handle payments, um, as well as reimbursements to our own staff and employees, um, we also have the potential of the revenue stream as well. Uh, so we think that it would be a good fit for us. Okay. Thanks for that information and explanation. Uh, any further questions for the finance director? Alderman Wolski? President Johnson, I think I would just uh, uh, seek a clarification. Uh, Mr. Lakefield presented us with kind of an updated recommend, recommended action and uh, just to make sure that the motion reflects that. Uh, in terms of authorizing the staff to negotiate with Wells Fargo? Yes. Okay. Yep. I think we're clear. And, and um, City Attorney Hendershot has identified um, a few items that we would still like to uh, clarify. We've requested a copy of the contract from Cass County. We haven't received that yet. Um, so we just want to make sure that, uh, you know, we negotiate the best possible agreement as well. So we'd like some flexibility. Uh, without having to delay and come back for an, another round of approval. Okay. Mayor Settler. Just one question, Mr. Lakefield. With the 30 days notice of termination, are there any uh, cancellation fees or any kind of financial consequences should things not work out? President Janser, uh, Mayor Sipma, uh, the only caveat they have with that is Wells Fargo has offered to, I would say, front the, the money for the um, the modification to the SunGuard um, product, so we wouldn't have to pay that up front. They would fund that or withhold that from our uh, first round of uh, rebates or, or uh, commissions, however you want to look at that. That would be the only caveat with that if we terminated immediately and hadn't earned enough of a, a rebate to cover that cost that we'd be responsible for that. And I believe the modification was a little over $7,000. Um, just to clarify again from my own understanding, Dave, uh, we would expect this to, to come back for us for a, one more final approval uh, w when we get to the end of the, the agreed contract. Uh, President Janser and Alderman Wolski, I guess what we are asking for is the authorization to negotiate the contract and for the mayor to so uh, sign the final negotiated contract. City Manager, you have a comment? Thank you, President Janser. I just wanted to mention that if uh, that is the bidding of the council, we'd want to clarify the motion to include the acceptance. Of so clarified. Thank you. Okay. Council? Okay, we're agreed on that. Uh, anything further for the finance director? Thank you, sir. Okay, further discussion? All right, please call the roll. Sitma? Yes. Janser? Yes. Olson? Yes. Pittner? Yes. Wolski? Yes. Uh, motion carried. Item 30 is the uh, purchase of 416 Northwest 2nd Avenue. President Janser? Uh, Alderman Wolski? I would move that we advance this to council on Monday night without recommendation. Okay, is there a second to that? I'll second. Seconded by Mayor Sitma. Discussion. Alderman Wolski. Uh, this is one of the items that I um, haven't taken a really close look at, but at, at uh, first read, there were. I think it just maybe rubbed me the wrong way in some senses, and so I wanted to take the the, the weekend to maybe collect my my thoughts and and uh, share them more clearly on Monday night. Uh, Mayor Sitma. Thank you, President Janser. Uh, and I'm not sure who would be the appropriate person to ask on this. With the separation of our offer and the commission's offer of 
Is that based on back taxes? Digging into it, there's a little bit of back and forth with all the numbers on here. Maybe you can elaborate. Yeah, I think bit. that was in the write-up, but go ahead, uh, Finance Director. President Janser, Mayor Sipma, it, it appears that their, the calculation for their counteroffer is the balances, balance of the taxes owed to the taxing entities with the exception of the City of Minot portion of those taxes and the City of Minot special assessments. Um, so it appears that uh, the other taxing entities, meaning the school, the park district, and the county uh, would receive their share of the back taxes and the city of Minot would not participate in that. Thank so, you. That was the clarification yeah, so I was looking for. In other words, so we, we eat mm -hmm. what's owed us, but they get paid is the way, the way it's set up. Is that a correct characterization? That is the way, uh, President Janser, that is the way the offer is worded. Uh, city Attorney Hendershot and I have been doing some research on this um, as far as the interpretation of the law and how those sale proceeds uh, need to be distributed. Um, this entry code is specific on the proceeds and how they're dished out. And it specifically states that they're attributed to the oldest uh, unpaid tax and divvied out proportionately if the, the first year of unpaid tax is satisfied, they move back to the next oldest year and so forth. The city's special assessment was considerable and that was in 2016. Um, and that is the bulk of the tax that is owed against the property. So if we were to respond to this offer for this dollar amount, um, with the exception of the caveat that it's only for the other taxing entities, um, it would satisfy the two oldest tax years plus some of the third tax year, um, but it wouldn't get to the most recent tax years. Okay. Mayor Sedma. Uh, Mr. Lakefielder, maybe Ms. Hendershot, at this point, going back to the century code then and following what the law says in terms of how this process should proceed, um, has that been outlined to the commission or to the other taxing entities? It, uh, President Janser, Mayor Sitma, it has not. Okay. Um, and my recommendation would be that whatever, um, whatever this body decides to do, um, that we would take that offer back to the, the commission and, and address them at their, whatever meeting this is on their agenda. Mayor Sitma. I'd make a motion to amend the, uh, the original motion to have Mr. Lakefield and Ms. Hendershot renegotiate then with the county following the state century code process and following up with them on exactly how this should, should proceed through state century code. Second. Seconded by Alderman. We have an amendment to the motion. Um, discussion on the amendment. Alderman Wolski. Uh, I'm gonna, it sounded to me, Mr. Lakefield, like there's maybe still some question marks about century code. So that, is it possible that that motion doesn't really clarify the, our direction for us? President Janser and Alderman Wolski and, and Ms. Hendershot, you can jump in anytime you like, but I, I would say that uh, yeah, there is still definitely some confusion here. Um, it, we, obviously we're looking for a direction from this body uh, to go back to them. If we were to carry an offer back to them um, with any stipulations or maybe a dollar amount without the proposed stipulations from the commission, then I would recommend that we do that, um, address the council, um, and maybe address those concerns um, at their meeting or the commission, I should say. And uh, you know, at that point, they could either accept the offer or reject it and do a counter offer again. Okay, so um, city attorney or, or city manager, do you have a comment? Uh, thank you, President Janser. I just want to say we have a procedural, a procedural issue that we need to work out. Uh, there's a original motion was to re recommend without, or, or to move this forward to the city council without recommendation. The second motion was to amend that, which really isn't oh, necessarily yes. amending that. So we'd like to have a withdrawal of the second motion. Uh, 
So done. Okay. Second okay. agrees. Second agrees. Fantastic. We're back to the original motion, original which is motion. to pass it on with no recommendation. Unless you want to withdraw that and substitute it for a, an alternative motion. Who is the second on the first Sit motion? Oh, okay. Uh, I'm I, back over here then. I, I was the original motion maker, and, and I, uh, I, I think I would still prefer the, the, the weekend to, to process some parts of this. So I, I'm, um, I'm comfortable with my motion, um, and I'm comfortable with it being voted either direction, too. Okay. Any uh, closeout comments from staff? Seeing none, uh, thank you, Mr. Lakefield. Any further discussion amongst the group? Just one follow-up, Mr. Mike. President, and that's perhaps we can have a little dis discussion Monday morning um, with staff on perhaps a price point on which the county would or the city would feel comfortable considering the, uh, the issues with state and statutory code and how those funds have to be distributed. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. President, City Manager, we can certainly do that. Um, I think the bigger issue here that uh, is of concern to staff, uh, certainly for me, is uh, the county's approach in regard to uh, this particular property and the city's efforts to advance flood control uh, and the desire to acquire this particular property. Yet, uh, while the city is financing the full flood control project, local share with our tax dollars. Uh, we still can't seem to get the county to want to participate with us, even as it relates to negotiating a uh, more reasonable price for the property. So I think some of that's got to come out and be discussed. And I think maybe Alderman Wolski, I don't want to speak for you. I think maybe those are the thoughts you'd like to collect and, and, uh, and maybe we talk again about how it is we want to approach the county. It may be more appropriate to have uh, one of our elected officials uh, or alternatively, direct me to go to the county on your behalf and state whatever it is that you'd like to see happen in, in regard to the counter offer. But I don't think negotiation between staff and the county at this point in time is going to be productive because the county commission has has authorized this counter offer that's been placed in front of you today. So just maybe a few additional comments that might help you in your deliberation. Okay. Mr. Ackerman. Mr. President, I guess I'm not exactly sure why I'm getting into this arena right now, but I just want to provide a little bit of additional context. I was at the county commission meeting in which this was discussed. Uh, basically, the county was discussing getting what they need in back taxes. The idea being if the city were to basically buy it for the remaining entity's share of those back taxes, that all would be taken care of because I guess the, the conversation that occurred was the city would buy it and then pay itself for the taxes if they were to do the whole amount of back taxes. So what's the difference? Um, I, mm -hmm. I, feel like, I feel like we're making a mountain out of a molehill and uh, throwing barbs between the two entities I just don't think it's healthy. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Any further discussion? Seeing none, let's vote. Please call the roll. Wolski? Yes. Sitma? Yes. Janser? Yes. Olson? Yes. Hitner? Yes. All right. Um, motion carried. I would point out that item 31 is the uh, report from the airport director that's available to you uh, to peruse uh, unless anybody has some questions for the airport director. Um, item 32 is the international existing building code and uh, is there a motion? Alden Wolski. I'm going to just check the, uh, the language in the memo here, one that I wrote uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, so the motion is to uh, that the council or the committee of the whole in this case discuss factors surrounding adoption of the international. So I guess I would move we open a discussion on the international existing building code. Okay. Second. All right. Moved and seconded to discuss this matter. Uh, City manager. Thank you, President Jetzer. Um, 
I think on this issue, Alderman Wolski, since you brought it to the committee, uh, some additional information might be helpful for you to maybe put your mind at ease as it relates to the process associated with adoption of state codes. Um, there is a, uh, there are separate meetings that occur for, uh, throughout the state that um, allow for the debating and adoption of the state code. And um, that process is about to begin in August. And on, as I've been told by our building official, on the docket is this very discussion about this alternative existing building code. Um, there are already movements uh, in this state and in other states as well to substitute sections of the International Building Code, uh, particularly the chapter on existing buildings with some of the statute or standards that, in, that exist in the code that you've, you've suggested here. And my recommendation would be that the city not separately attempt to try to negotiate or evaluate any of that. Let's let the state uh, activity take its place and uh, keeping in mind that, this, that the city under no circumstances would be allowed to um, adopt a code that is more uh, or that is less stringent than the state's codes. Uh, and we run that risk if we try to independently evaluate and thereby institute any section or sections of the international existing or existing building code uh, separate and aside from what the state's willing to exist or to adopt. So I would say maybe with some patience, allow the state process to take place. We'll have an opportunity after that process is done, likely November, December time, to then evaluate what the city of uh, Minot wants to do in relation to um, the codes that are being going to be recommended or adopted by the state. Uh, but, but having our own separate process is going to be a laborious um, undertaking that, uh, quite frankly, we don't have the, the time and, and staff to do at this point in time. It seems better suited to, to allow the state process to take its course. Alderman Wolski. President Johnson, Mr. Berry, thank you for those comments. Um, it, so this is a clarification uh, for me, uh, just in terms of the way we operate. But uh, this would be one of those cases where the Home Rule Charter does not provide us the specific authority to, to address this issue? So the Home Rule Charter um, will allow us to adopt codes that are more stringent than the state's adoption of codes, but not less. Okay. So we have to be careful that whatever we would decide wouldn't conflict with any codes that the state would have adopted in that, in that form or fashion. So that's, that's why I would caution you at this point in time. Let's see what the state's going to do in its revision of the building codes. And then if we want to do something more stringent, we could certainly do that, but we would not be allowed to do anything less stringent. Alderman Wolski. President Janser, thanks. Um, I, and I appreciate those thoughts, and, and, uh, and I think I'm willing to, to defer to that wisdom, Mr. Berry. I, I think it might. Um, what I would like to maybe see is the council perhaps uh, pass a resolution in, in support uh, of this uh, uh, adoption of this ex international existing building code as, as an option that be made available to the city. Uh, uh, so, so those folks down there know very clearly, and I don't, I, you know, this is not my area of expertise, but, but just in the preamble of that code, uh, I, I feel like there's a, there's a lot of common sense that, that uh, feel like issues that we've kind of been butting heads with here and there uh, recently on building projects. And uh, to hold renovations of 100-year-old buildings to the same standard we hold uh, new construction given the... Uh, the structural integrity of some of the buildings <laughs> standing for a very long time. To, I, I just, like I said, I think there's a lot of common sense here, and I, I want to express to the state that that I would support the adoption of this. Okay. Anyway, I think the motion was that we discuss this. It's discussion. But yeah, it's just discussion, and we we're doing that. So I think I think we're fine. Um, any other comments about this issue at the present time? Okay. Then uh, I believe uh, that concludes our agenda. And uh, with no further business, this uh, group will stand adjourned. <laughs>